Hello and welcome to Stewardship Stories, a podcast about people who take care of land. You can learn more at stewardshipstories.com. Megan Arquin and Rob Lynch run Riverland Farm, an organic vegetable farm on the banks of the Connecticut River in Sunderland, Massachusetts. They run it as a CSA, which stands for Community Supported Agriculture. During the growing season, their members come to pick up a share of produce each week. And what do you guys grow on the farm? We grow uh, about 60 different kinds of vegetables um, and flowers, herbs, um, just about any vegetable that you can name that grows in this climate we do. Asparagus to zucchini, but not asparagus. (laughs) (laughs) Except asparagus. (laughs) Yeah, we don't grow a lot of perennial perennial crops. It's mostly annual, annual vegetables. So we grow a lot of greens, salad mixes, um, head lettuce, chard, spinach, carrots, beets, tomatoes, eggplant, peppers, squash, squash, yeah. squash, garlic. Well, I think since this season was a really difficult season, it also proved that. I mean, you, you Rob, Rob wrote our newsletters this year, and he wrote, he wrote something that I thought was really um, true, which is diversity is the the yardstick of our survival. Is that what you said? Which is true. I mean, with the the season that we had this year, it was brutal. Like, rain, wind, hail, you name it. We had it, like, every other week. And some crops did really well, and some crops um, didn't. You want some popcorn? Sure. <laughs> so, yeah, we grew this. This is actually from last year, so... Er, 2007, so it's totally dry. It's ready to ready to pop. You guys take just it off this. Take it off the cob, and yeah, it'll if pop. You, if you kind of work in this direction, like against the grain, and go down like a couple of the rows uh-huh. like that, going in this direction, then it's easy to twist to take it off that way. It's definitely a workout for your fingers, but it's well <laughs> worth it. We had a goal of being able to make our living off the farm. Um, so this is the end of our second year now, and things are going okay. We uh, we bu- actually bought this land over here in this house um, last winter. So we have long-term security here and we still have a, a kind of a short-term lease with them. We're leasing their land still, uh, some of their equipment in that building over there. Um, but we're working towards a long-term agreement with them. Riverland Farm had already been protected with an Agricultural Preservation Restriction, or APR, when Rob and Megan bought it. This reduced the price of the property because it means it can never be developed. I think it's huge. I mean, we wouldn't have been able to buy this land if if it wasn't an APR. Just the, you know, paying development value to try to farm here would have been impossible for us, so. I don't know if you want to look around in here at all. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. It's it's a mess. Actually, it's not too bad. Hey. It's... It's kind of difficult to envision this. Rob and I always sit in here when there's no vegetables in here, and we're like, we need to do something to make it prettier, but really it's the vegetables that sort of bring this building to light. And so <laughs> usually we uh, have a bunch of tables here that are set up, and we use these dry erase boards, and, and we do uh, a mix-and-match system, which you know we use basically a bag size. And we put out whatever we've harvested, like the, the varieties, all the range, and we say... You know, you can pick whatever you want out of all these vegetables, just fill your bag, you know, this full. <laughs> and it works really nice for people, so I don't have to take things that they don't want to. Yeah. And then, you know, things like tomatoes and corn and watermelon and stuff like that will offer by the count, so everybody gets a fair share of it. Well, um, I guess yesterday, or no, Saturday, excuse me, was one of the, the last, it was the last day that we did a distribution. And the one thing that I kept hearing um, was how it impacts the, their children, people that, that have young kids that bring them to the farm. I think that because um, the kids can come out to the farm and do the you pick and, and pick their own strawberries and beans and things like that, that they're, they're more involved in, in seeing that and picking it and actively eating and saying, look, that's, this is great. You know, they, they, they always say the kids never, ever, you know, ate a green bean in their life before, but since they went out into the field, somehow it was more exciting or fun or whatever, they were they were actively participating in it, but they were able to then sort of move over and start eating vegetables. And it's really great I uh, to see the kids, because I usually would run the share room and they'd be like, Farmer Megan, you know, they, <laughs> it's really, really sweet to see how they're learning at the farm and how excited they get. So 
I love that feedback. I love that connection. I love, you know, seeing people take the food home with them and, like, making multiple trips to the car with, like, the vegetables. People that are, are pregnant and, you know, they're they're like, my, you know, this baby is growing off of your vegetables. It's just, I I love that. I think that's, it's totally great to, to have that connection and see people learn. Yeah, I think that's what keeps me going. And just, just seeing how each season impacts you know, each vegetable, each variety, each crop, and, and the, you know, the new things that we can learn from that. It takes an incredible amount of patience, and I, I really enjoy that. I like winters off, too. It's nice. <laughs> 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 Have you looked at the garlic? Did it do Yeah, it's, uh, it's got some pretty good roots. Does it? Mm -hmm. Some of it's actually kind of popping up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, where was this? How many? 22... Thousand yep. cloves of garlic. Wow. Yeah. It was actually a good year for planting garlic. That was kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Some years, if it's like, you know, if it's just this cold and windy out, it gets a little hard. It was a fun year. But yeah, it's like the probably the most interesting job that I've ever done. You know, it's like so varied every with the season and just with the everyday work that it's always kind of interesting I and mean, there's like times of the year that you're doing the same thing over and over again for sure but then there's other days where you know something breaks and it can be frustrating but it's like oh well then I gotta figure out how to fix this and and it's just like uh it's, it's just interesting to see how your body adapts to doing different things and I guess being at like the seventh year that we've been doing this like and just seeing that progression every year, I think, like, I'm almost predisposed to it, like, happening. <laughs> and farming becomes, like, a real lifestyle. And I think that's partly what I like about it, too. It's more than just a job. We do a lot of our U-Pick stuff down here for people to come down. It's a little quieter than being up by the road. Mm. I mean, I grew up eating chicken fingers and french fries and coke, and I was not, I did not like my vegetables at all. Mm. So I think it, it's definitely improved my health. I feel like it also has affected my family, you know? I mean, they, I think originally when I was going to, I said, I'm going to be a farmer, you know, I'm going to grow vegetables. At first, I feel like my mother was kind of like, hmm, yeah, what about your major? How is that, you know, like, what, you, went all, you went to school, but you didn't really study growing vegetables, so how does that apply? But at this point now, they, they love it, you know, and they, they love talking about it, and they bring it to, to you know, their friends and family. So I, I feel like it, it gets contagious. My father started a vegetable garden. My family is definitely really skeptical about farming and where are we going to be able to make a living off of doing this, and... I think they've totally come around on it and realized that it is like important. This is our latest, um, our latest kind of experiment. Uh, we had this field house down um, on the other field earlier this year, and um, just a couple, I guess it was maybe three weeks ago, we had a bunch of our uh, farmer friends over here. We had like 25 people over here, and we picked it up and carried it up to up to here. Which was, it was pretty cool. We're trying to do some sort of winter greens and just as an experiment sort of for ourselves. We can go inside if you want. I really, I really like that about farming in this area is, is, is the support network in the, in, in the farming community. And the soil that's here, I mean, in the Connecticut River Valley is some of the best in the country. And that kind of goes back to the, the land being protected. You know, there's a lot of land around here that hasn't been protected. It's a crime to build on on this kind of land. It's it's just meant for producing vegetables, it seems like, mm -hmm. or producing uh, any kind of agricultural products. It's really good soil. Right. When I got home, my boyfriend and I made some of the popcorn Megan and Rob gave me. It was delicious. If you want to learn more about Riverland Farm, their website is riverlandfarm.com.